Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from TrainSignal. The following clip is from TrainSignal's Windows Server 2008 MCITP Server Administrator course featuring over 15 hours of server administrator training. And then in the server manager I'm going to go ahead and click on roles and then it'll take just a moment here while it figures out what roles we currently have and as soon as it does we'll go ahead and click on add roles. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Roles. And the role that we want to add is right here, Terminal Services. Check that box and click Next. And here's an introduction into what Terminal Services is. I'll click Next. And you'll see here it's going to ask me what role services we want to install. Well, we want to install the Terminal Server, right? We want to be a Terminal Server. And you'll notice that it's giving us a warning here about installing a Terminal Server on a, on a server that has Active Directory Domain Services. It's generally not recommended, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Because we know exactly what we're doing. Now we're going to need the Session Broker Gateway and Web Access, so I'm going to click all three boxes. You'll notice that when I click the box for the TS Gateway, it says that I need other services and features. So we'll go ahead and add those services as well, and then check the box for TS Web Access. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next now that we have all our role services in place. You'll notice here it talks about uninstall and reinstall applications for compatibility. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Here is where you get to choose whether you want to require network level authentication or not. Even though we're going to go ahead and upgrade the remote desktop connection client on any Windows XP clients, I'm going to go ahead and since we know we have Windows XP clients, I'm going to recommend that we do not require network level authentication at first, but then we can come back and do this later once we know that all of our clients definitely can meet the requirements. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Here it wants to know about the licensing mode. In this case, we're going to configure later because we have up to 120 days before it's going to bother us with this. Let me go ahead and click on next. Here we need to select groups that are going to be allowed access to this terminal server. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on add. I'm going to put in sales and check names. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Let me go ahead and click on next. On this screen, it's asking about installing a certificate for SSL encryption. Now, here's the thing. I could choose an existing certificate if we had one. You know, this would be if I went out to, let's say, VeriSign and went and got a certificate for this server. But this is something that is required if you're going to use the Terminal Services Gateway. Matter of fact, if you look down here, it says, this option is recommended for small-scale deployments or test scenarios only. After installing TS Gateway, you must manually install the certificate on clients that communicate with the server. And that's because with a self-signed certificate, the clients aren't going to already trust the signer of the certificate. We could also choose to do this later, but then you'll notice right here it says for TS Gateway to function, you have to have a valid certificate. So we'll go ahead and create a self-signed certificate for SSL and click Next. Now this screen talks about creating authorization policies for the Terminal Services Gateway. And if we just, I mean, if you just kind of look at what it says right on the screen, a Terminal Services Connection Authorization Policy, okay, or TS CAP as it's sometimes referred to, allows you to specify the users who can connect to this gateway server. If you used a Terminal Services Resource Authorization Policy, and I will tell you, the only words that change, the only one word changes there, you have connection up here and you have resource here, which of course makes this TS wrap, right? You got TS cap and TS wrap. And I will tell you, you're going to want to know the differences between them. TS cap, again, was for specifying the users who can connect, whereas TS wrap allows you to configure a mapping between user groups and the computers that they can connect through. So if you want to control which terminal server, aka a resource, <laughs> which terminal server that certain users and groups are going to need to be connected through, 
that would be done via TS wrap. And then it goes on to basically say that you can use this wizard to go ahead and create both authorization policies. And until you create both a TS cap and a TS wrap, users aren't going to be able to connect to network resources through the TS gateway server. So we'll go ahead and click now. We want to go ahead and create these policies right now because it's going to be a requirement. We're setting up a TS gateway. So if I click next, here you'll see that it takes us into the TS gateway user groups. It says here, add the groups that will be associated with both TS cap and wrap. Okay, and well, because we know this is for our sales users, once again, I'm going to click add, and then I'm going to put in sales, just click check names, and you'll see here we get sales users. Click OK. If I click next, here it talks about how we have to create a TS cap to allow users to connect to this gateway server. Only members of user groups that you select will be allowed to connect. So what are we going to do? We're going to create a name for the TS cap. Well, I'm not real worried about the name right now. So we'll just leave the default just saying, look, I have to do this. And you know, we're only doing this for the one group. So let's just kind of make it happen. So we'll leave the name alone. It says you must then specify at least one supported Windows authentication method. And there's nothing really that we've talked about as far as smart cards and Global Mantics is not equipped with smart cards yet. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it with password protection. Go ahead and click next. Now we have to go ahead and come up with a name for TS wrap. Well, <laughs> we'll take the default again, TS wrap one, no big deal there. So it says here, specify which computers are accessible through this TS wrap. Well, the choices are here, allow users to connect only to computers in the following group, or you could say, go ahead and allow users to connect to any computer on the network. Okay, and here it talks about this means they can get to any computer that's accessible via remote desktop. It's your choice. You could go ahead and limit this right down to a specific group of computers. Okay, and if I click browse, I can go ahead and add specific computers in. Or I can go ahead and say any computer on the network, which is what we're going to do in this instance. Because we don't have any specific limitations that we need to have here. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now it talks about the network policy and access services. Okay, remember that was something that had to be done as part of installing the terminal services gateway role service. If I go on, it asks me, you know, it's pretty much asking me, hey, what role services do you want to have? And I'm just going to take the default because we're not real worried about any of these extras right now. We just know that we need the network policy server as a requirement. So I'll click next. And then again, here comes web server IIS role services. Again, I will just take the defaults. It's all been configured for me. There's nothing special I have to do. I'll go ahead and click on next. Here I get my confirmation screen where you'll see that there is an awful lot that we're doing here. Okay, but I want to point out a couple things. One, here's the little warning that I might need to reinstall any existing applications. No big deal there. We, we knew that that was the case and I have not installed the application yet. If I go down here, you'll notice under the session broker, it talks about additional configuration that's going to have to happen. You're going to have to add computer accounts for the terminal servers in the farm. So in other words, we're going to have to say what terminal servers are going to be part of the farm. And then we're going to have to actually configure the session broker settings on each server in the farm, as well as some additional information. So let me go ahead and click install. And as you could imagine, since there are a number of things that are being installed right now, this is going to take a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will come back as soon as this is all complete. Thanks for watching. For more information about our full video course, please visit our website at www.trainsignal.com.